centers in the world responsible for protecting the skies over North America capable of monitoring enemy missiles around the globe in charge of deterring terrorists in the aftermath of 9-11 and it's buried deep inside a mountain this is NORAD the North American Aerospace Defense Command Center its state-of-the-art computer systems are linked to a worldwide early warning network of satellites, sensors, and radar. NORAD's mission is to track all top-secret intelligence transmitted from this sophisticated warning system. But its top priority is to use that intelligence to monitor the skies for incoming strikes against North America. Assess potential threats and coordinate a full-on military response, giving U.S. forces enough time to intercept or shoot down the enemy. Manning this megastructure, about 1,500 military and civilian employees from the U.S. and Canadian Armed Forces. They stand guard 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Their motto, deter, detect, and defend. The idea for a command center of this caliber first emerges during the test nuclear arms race between the U.S. and Soviet Union. The need for NORAD becomes critically clear on August 29, 1949, when the Soviet Union detonates its first atomic bomb at a test site in Kazakhstan. America's position as the world's leading superpower is now in jeopardy. counter the possibility of a nuclear threat from the Soviets. The United States and Canada form NORAD, which stands for North American Aerospace Defense Command. By 1958, NORAD's detection system relies on a global network of 57 radar sites planted above the Arctic Circle. It's called the Distance Early Warning Line, or DEW Line. But NORAD's nuclear defense has an Achilles heel the headquarters itself. NORAD is operating out of an old hospital in downtown Colorado Springs. Although it's close to other military facilities, including a U.S. Air Force base, the building built in 1923 is a vulnerable target. The commander at the time said, there's a problem here. Anybody driving by with a bazooka could knock out this command center. Military officials are forced to rethink the location of NORAD's headquarters. They need a protected site and a structure that's virtually indestructible. The Army Corps of Engineers is brought in to design this state-of-the-art military fortress. We needed something that would be able to survive a nuclear attack so that we could respond in kind, and the Soviets would know that, and therefore, hopefully, not attack us in the first place. The Army Corps of Engineers was the mastermind behind the Pentagon military complex 17 years earlier, and America's top secret missile silos in the 1950s. But the concept for this mountain complex comes at a time when engineering technology is relatively unsophisticated and limited. In 1958, computers as we know them today have yet to be invented. The engineers used slide rules when they built this facility. To get started, military designers proposed three different locations for the megastructure. They can dig out a concrete underground bunker like those constructed during World War II. They can erect NORAD inside an abandoned mine. Or they can implement their most extreme design by carving out the inside of a mountain. 2,000 feet of natural solid granite protection convinced the engineers to build NORAD deep within a mountain. The next step find that mountain. They began the search in their own backyard, the Colorado Rockies. So engineers narrow the choice to two sites, the 9,423-foot Blodgett Peak and the 9,565-foot-high Cheyenne Mountain. 
To select the best option, engineers must analyze rock core samples from each mountain. This process will determine which one offers the sturdiest protection for this unique underground megastructure. Helicopter pilots are hired to transport men, generators, and the heavy core sampling equipment to the sites. At each location, survey crews drill holes three inches in diameter and up to 1,600 feet deep. They use a borehole camera to photograph the rock structure inside the two mountains. When they did the core samples in Blodgett Peak, they discovered that there was a lot of water compared to Cheyenne Mountain. Uh, they had much harder rock uh, and, and, and much more consistent rock in Cheyenne Mountain. Because it has a more stable rock structure, Cheyenne Mountain is selected as the future home of NORAD. Engineers must now map out the construction project. Phase one, excavate tunnels, chambers, and reservoirs inside the mountain to create a five-acre military installation big enough to hold five football fields. Phase two, build a self-supporting city with 12 interlocking personnel buildings, its own water reservoirs, fuel supply, power plant, and ventilation systems. Like the Pentagon, this city will be open 24 hours a day. Staff will be stationed at roughly 800 desks and operate about 1,000 computers in an estimated 1,000 offices. NORAD will have life-sustaining amenities like a gym, corner store, and cafeteria. Many of the building's exact details will remain under wraps due to the high security protecting this top-secret facility. But there's one characteristic that sets this headquarters apart from other megastructures. The ability to completely seal itself off in the event of a nuclear attack. NORAD must be able to function and keep its personnel alive for 30 days without any support from the outside world. For phase three of the NORAD military complex, technical engineers will install a powerful scientific computer linked to a super surveillance system capable of monitoring missile activity around the globe. NORAD is considered a level one facility, and that means that this structure will have the highest operational security available. Building this military headquarters presents a challenge unlike any other that engineers of the time have attempted. 700,000 tons of granite must be excavated from inside the mountain, a weight equal to almost 4,000 commercial jets before construction of the buildings can even begin. By late September 1959, two years since the initial conception of NORAD, construction crews hit their first obstacle. Engineers have positioned the North Tunnel entrance 1,000 feet above the base of the mountain. But the site is so remote, men and machinery can't access it by land. A four-mile long road must be planned and bulldozed before crews can start excavating the mountain. It takes more than two months to complete the road, from its beginning in Colorado Springs to the end point a thousand feet up Cheyenne Mountain. But by November 1959, just as the new road is almost ready to transport crew and equipment, the entire project comes to a screeching halt. The roadblock this time? Money. Congress has not approved additional funds for NORAD. At the start of 1960, with the threat of nuclear war still a frightening reality, America's answer, NORAD, may never be built. Fire in the hole. Miners blast out tons of solid granite, risking an early grave for this stealth megastructure. Now back to Megastructures NORAD. November 1959. All across the U.S., Americans are living on the edge of a nuclear threat. The U.S. government is building what it believes is America's only viable solution. A top-secret military complex capable of seeing into every corner of the world.
construction crews have just enough time to finish the $1 million access road before the government shuts down the entire project. Estimates for the rest of the project are more than $26 million, and military officials are constantly updating and resubmitting NORAD's initial plans. It takes another 16 months for Congress to approve the design and funding of this underground megastructure and jumpstart the construction process. Once the green light is given, military officials stage a highly public groundbreaking ceremony for their top secret fortress. This is a message to the Soviets that the U.S. is taking the threat of nuclear war very seriously. There was no secret. What was secret at the time and remained secret uh, uh, really up until the 1980s was exactly how hardened that facility would be. What kind of a nuclear uh, blast could it survive? On June 16, 1961, top military officials detonate the first blast. Three stop-and-go years after NORAD's preliminary design, construction finally begins. It starts with a mammoth dig. A crew of just 90 workers have one year to carve out five acres and remove 700,000 tons of granite for two main tunnels and seven 60-foot tall caverns, equivalent to five and a half stories. These holdout chambers will become the protective shell for NORAD's 12 interlocking staff buildings and three industrial structures that include a power plant. Total size, 104,980 square feet. Each tunnel will lead to those buildings from different sides of the mountain. First job for the excavation crew, blast out the tunnels. From day one, engineers face one of their biggest hurdles, how to keep thousands of tons of rock and debris from burying the whole project. Blasting is the fastest and cheapest way to excavate granite. Miners at NORAD attempt traditional blasting techniques, where dynamite is heavily packed into drilled holes. But soon realize this method risks fracturing and loosening the rock. In the worst case scenario, the cavern ceiling could come crashing down on top of them. Crews must develop a more controlled way of blasting that keeps the walls intact. Dr. Paul Wersey is a blasting expert who consulted on the NORAD megastructure. Wersey shows how the traditional blasting method used at NORAD can trigger a rock wall to crumble and cave in. All these fractures here are blast induced and it's really loosened up. I can even pull the material off with my hands quite easily. Now, if I could do that with a steel bar, just imagine what the shockwave from a nuclear weapon could do. To avoid a cave-in, NORAD's explosives team used a new technique developed in 1956 called smooth wall blasting. Miners first calculate a blasting pattern by painting a series of arched lines on the granite walls. are then carefully drilled along those lines and packed loosely with large sticks of dynamite. Timing is crucial. Each arch must be detonated from the inside out in a precisely choreographed sequence. 